welcome back to the channel there, Papa's Posse. Once again, it's time for Papa's Comic Books. Coffee and more. Okay. Before we begin, don't forget about that QR code right there. You hit that QR code, it'll take you to all my social media pages. That's the eBay, the Instagram, and the YouTube. All right. Are we ready to get into today's reading? Let's see who we have. It is... Four Core, issue one of four, number one, dollar seventy five back in nineteen ninety three. Title of the story is A Gathering of Heroes by Tom DeFalco and Patrick Cliffy. Now, don't forget about that QR code also. This book and others are available on my eBay page, Papa's Dash Comic Dash Books. Okay? Please hit that like button down below. Please hit that subscribe button down below. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought about this book. All right, let's see what we have for Thorcor. Lo, there shall be a gathering. July 29, 2593 AD. To some North American urban centuries is the multi-leveled, many-wondered city of the far distant future. To others, it is a grim, overpopulated alternative reality where corporations have usurped the role of government and virtually everyone owes his soul to some company store. But to those who live here, it is quite simply home. A home filled with the usual drudgeries, disappointments, joys, and thrills. And of course, there are the occasional surprises, like seeing an authentic caveman hurled through a plate glass window. That's a surprise. From different worlds and times come three mighty warriors, each empowered by an enchanted Asgardian weapon, which grants the astonishing abilities of the legendary god of Eric Masterson, god of thunder. Together, Dargo, Kator, Beta Ray Mill, and Eric Masterson join the form the Thor Corps, the lobby of Adcor, one of the largest advertising agencies on the continent. Mere moments ago, alerted by the nerve-jarring screams of panicked pedestrians, Dargo Kator, the once and future Thor, arrived to find raiders from the dawn of time. These creatures are more beasts than man. From the stench of them, I doubt they've ever experienced the joy of bathing. They suddenly materialized in the lobby and began attacking passerbys at random. But why? Where are they from? What is their mission? Gathering of heroes. These brutes seem to be instinctively lashing out more because of their own fear than from any true mal maliciousness. And they appear to lack the necessary intelligence to have purposely engineered this scenario. Someone is obviously using them as a distraction. And one name immediately leaps to my mind. Demon Staff, my greatest enemy. Can't waste any more time with these slackers while a real monster is on the loose. A little lightning display should. Wait, they're suddenly pulling a fade, disappearing before my eyes. The cavemen are all gone, like they were never here. Either Demonstaff has a, already achieved his goal, or I'm in luck and it's taking him longer than he anticipated. 27 floors skyward up into the penthouse level of the AdCorp building. It is a refreshing to see a chief operating officer who truly knows his place, Dunbar. Oh, he's on his knees before his most valued employee. However, now that my staff has blasted away this false wall to reveal your private safe, the time has such petty triumphs has passed. I know what you want, Gorko, and I beg you to reconsider. The man who was Halagorgo is dead, thanks to you. Only demon staff remains. Open that safe now. I understand that it requires your handprint as well as a living DNA sample. And I am perfectly willing to sear off your entire left arm if you refuse to cooperate. For the shadow of the anti of, of an instant, the gaunt executive hesitates, weighing non-existent options, and then, all right, I'll do as you ask. You needn't sound so maudlin, Dunbar. You had no choice. If anyone deserves self-loathing, it's me. I never even questioned 
why an advertising agency would find would fund an interdimensional physicist and just look what happened. But I think I can finally put matters right. You, you're going after Eileen. You can't be serious. It's suicide. Think of the risks to all of us. A man with nothing to lose is also a man who has nothing to fear. Besides, this little piece of circuitry may help tip the odds in my favor. Unfortunately, you still present a problem to me. What the? Kaboom! Displaying a lightning like this can only mean good news as far as you're concerned, Mr. Dunbar. My enchanted hammer managed to track your distinctive energy signature, Demon, Demon Staff. Release your hostage and grab air. Don't force me to scrag you. While I have grown to admire your most impressive weapon, my friend, it cannot compare to my humble staff. Not only can I manipulate energy to assume whatever form I desire, like this simple shield, I can also pierce the very fabric of reality. You have no need to quarrel, Thor. I have already achieved my goal. Allow me to depart in peace, and I will spare your life. But the impetuous Dargo does not head, not heed the warning. Instead, he launches himself forward, barely quick enough to arcing blow, which would have surely severed his neck. Sorry, but I'm no slacker. Then you have only yourself to blame for what follows. Your talk is pure buzz. In case you haven't noticed, you missed. On the contrary, I never intended to hit you. Twank. After all, I need not soil my hands when I can slash a rift in the dimensional barrier and summon the appropriate pawns to perform such menial tasks. Are you having fun yet? I certainly am. I hate to conjure and run, but I have a full calendar today. Don't bother trying to follow. Slag those menial beasts. Demon staff would have been mine if only they didn't bar my ho. They're already returning to their own plane of reality. Forget those creatures, Gorko is the true monster. He's totally mad and means to destroy us all. I'm sure he'd like to try. You don't understand. He now has the necessary power to rock the very foundation of reality as we know it. It all began quite some time ago. As part of its service to the community, Adcor funds certain uh, worthwhile scientific enterprises. Halen Gorko was a brilliant scientist in those days. He was a true visionary with an interest in exploring the very nature of reality. Like a latter-day Christopher Columbus, he was convinced we could explore alternate worlds and parallel realities. Unfortunately, his first attempt to open a dimensional rift nearly proved fatal. Unwilling to risk human lives, I was determined to cancel the project. But Gorko's wife was also a scientist, and eventually Aline convinced me that her husband's work was too important to abandon. So persuasive was Aline that I took a personal interest in the project. Using Gorko's notes for a basis, we expanded upon his theories and took them in startling new directions. Eventually, after countless false starts and grueling work shifts, we cobbled together the dimen Dimensionizer, a device capable of piercing the dimensional barriers. Blinded by our initial success, we rushed to test it. But that's when tragedy struck. During a critical phase on the experiment, Aline was accidentally sucked into a dimensional rift. She must have been killed instantly. Needless to say, Gorko went mad with grief. Refusing to accept his wife's death, he blamed me for all his troubles. For his own good, I had him placed in a special sanitarium where he could be cared for. But somehow he managed to escape. And now he's back wearing some ridiculous costume. The man's obviously insane. He's obsessed with finding Aline. And he's taken to Omni Dim He's taken the Dimensionizer. Think of the havoc he could cause if he began opening dimensional rifts at random. He could end, endanger our entire plane of reality. Some time later, as shifts change and evening begins to embrace the urban center, Demon Staff wasn't just buzzing me, 
I've been flashing across the city for hours now and can't seem to light them. May as well call it a night. I have a full work shift tomorrow. While I may possess the power of Thor in this form, I'm still going to need a full meal and a good night's sleep if I expect to earn my daily quota. Can't help wondering about Dunbar's story. Corps chiefs aren't exactly prized for honesty, but what's his profit lying? Sala, you home? Where else would I be, Dargo dear? Last time I checked, only one member of this family spent his 12 hours regularly risking his neck out of some arcane sense of responsibility. The less intelligible member of the member I recall correctly. You only have yourself to blame. You could have chosen a smart slacker instead of a good looking one. Hungry too. Really looks like I drew a crashed disc of both programs. Lucky you are so huggable. Hungry too. That can be fixed. This demon staff sounds familiar, but all of those costume lunatics you fight have the most outlandish names. We've battled quite a few times, but he's always managed to escape. Never knew why he jammed on high-tech components until now. To tell you the truth, I feel sorry for the poor man. So do I, now that I know his story. I can only imagine what he's been going through, not knowing if his wife is dead or alive. Sal, if anything like that ever... Don't even think it, Dargo. You and I made a solemn pact long ago that part of your life stays outside. It doesn't enter our apartment. We're both safe here. How stinkingly sweet. I never would have believed that the mighty Thor, or should I call him Dargo, would lead such a dull and mundane life. He appears to be a little more than a common wage slave. Just goes to show how reality can ruin the best of illusions, but I intend to fix that before I'm through. I do not know what annoys me more, watching him with his pretty young wife while I am still denied my long-awaited reunion with Aline, or knowing that he pities me. I have no need for his pity, only his aid, and he will soon give it to me the most anxiously, Early the next morning, the first shift bell sounds as dawn stretches its fingers across the still slumbering city. See you at shift end, sweetheart. It's a shame that Dargo has to leave earlier than I do because he has much farther to commute. I'd better finish getting ready and... Quack, quack, quack. What's that? Something is hammering at our window, but we're on the 32nd floor. On some subconscious level, Sala realizes that Dargo's dual identity is no longer a secret. And her home has ceased to be a haven. Her window shatters to reveal a spy eye, the most sophisticated of all surveillance devices. Instinctively, she reaches out for the only weapon at hand, Dargo's walking stick. If only she were worthy, she could transform it into the master of the storm, the lord of the living lightning, and one of the most powerful worries of all, and so she does quite well enough for one so fragile and frightened. I pray you will forgive this unseemly intrusion, my dear Sala, but I have a most pressing business proposition for your husband. Sometime later, he even as third bell sounds for the second shifters, Sala, you, home? Fear could, cold and bitter, suddenly seizes Dargo in an all-enveloping -envel vice. But then, even before the coherent thought can form, no need to panic, old friend. A uh, whole of facts. If anything has happened to Sala, please, it's embarrassing enough that I had to resort to the old damsel in distress ploy. I was hoping we could bypass the customary melodramatic threats. I assume that even a muscle-bound oaf such as yourself was not fooled by Dunbar's company line. The Scrag deliberately sabotaged my work and attempted to steal my wife, but our friendly neighborhood corps raided accidentally unleashed forces far beyond the scope of his severely limited intelligence. Of course, I am also to blame. I accepted Adcor's money. I willingly allowed them to fund my experiments in interdimensions and physics until I stumbled upon their true goal. Not content with callously manipulating the public's fantasies like any other advertising agency at core 
sought to control reality itself. Just imagine what the universe would be like if it was subject to the whims of a coterie of crazed, a coterie of crazed ad execs. Oh well, one man's reality is another man's nightmare. But you have an even more pressing problem now. After ceasingly scouring the myriad planes of reality with the miniature dimensionizer, dimensionizer which powers my staff, I have finally managed to locate my errant wife. And you want me to rescue her? Bright boy, it is unfortunate that you may run across a few unpleasant obstacles. Spoken like a true hero, but as much as I have grown to respect your enthusiasm, initiative, and mighty power, I dare not risk sending you alone. Wait, what are you saying? Who will join me? Who are you to be, who are to be my comrades? Who? After a recent adventure in deep space that began when the Lady Sif asked his aid in finding the mighty Thor, Betray Bill has finally returned to Harmony, but all is not well on the new homeward, homeworld of his people. Wonder of wonders, this is monstrous planting growing at the geometric rate and threatens and to engulf this entire settlement. Behold, we are saved by cyborg warrior streaks to our rescue. As well he should, that grotesque mockery was bioengineered to defend us. Aye, but through I am sworn to protect you. I cannot ignore your fear or constant disdain, but I cannot worry about that when lives are endangered. Instead, I must seek the very heart of the plant's root system. Here I shall summon a single searing bolt of light, lightning to strike here. I only pray that no one, li no lives are lost before I can. Something's amiss. I am suddenly growing and substantial. I am fading before my very eyes. At that, at that self-same moment on the planet Earth. Nice workout, Kevin. Yeah, Bobby's been practicing with me lately. Divorced from Kevin's mother, who is custody of a boy, Eric Masterson, really enjoys an entire day with his son. I should be happy Kevin gets along with his new stepdad, but there's something about Bobby Steele that I just can't stomach. Maybe it's only be petty jealousy, but... Hey, Pop, ice cream. What say you... What, what do you say to a quick comb before we head home? Come on, I'll race you. Screech! <clears throat> Kevin, how many times I warned you against... What the... <clears throat> Kevin! Nice entrance, Masterson. You're as heroic as ever. What? What the heck are you doing here? Where is here, for that matter, and what's happened to my son? Greetings, friend. Eric, my, my, great, my heart is gladdened by your unexpected presence. Like yourself, I am also newly arrived. Our Hammer Brother surely holds the answers we seek. Demon Staff really scagged me. With all the time and space to choose from, I can't believe he tagged you too. Beta Ray Bill isn't so bad. He's a true warrior, born but mast born. But Masterson, what a slacker. This mission has barely begun and is already headed for a crash. Mission. I didn't volunteer for any stinking mission. <clears throat> I can't waste any time here. My son is in danger. <clears throat> and I mean now. Make with the magic, laughing boy. Send me home and just pray that nothing has happened to my son in the meanwhile. You don't have the only, you don't have the only loved one in danger, mister. Hey, what's with the straggly new looks? And why is lightning bolt dangling from your ear? It's a, a fashion statement. <clears throat> You're kidding, right? That's what you, that's, that was your idea. <coughs> Excuse me. Never mind. What's important is saving my son. Stay your wrath, rash one. I, too, have grave responsibilities elsewhere, but we owe Dargo his say. Yes, I guess we're all in this together, whether we like it or not, so I'd better fill you in. But even as Dargo Kator begins to speak, Behold the lean! These warriors are newly arrived within the chosen realities, and I believe they are journeyed to our hidden world, or elsewhere, 
as emissaries of your insidious husband. I am honestly surprised that it has taken him so long to mount the rescue operation. Warlord Cargo, please. Silence, my dear. I have already begun a conjuring. With the whole of reality at stake, I shall deposit these interlopers in a time and world where we would be well rid of them. Get real, Dargo. I don't care how powerful this de demon staff character is. One man can't possibly threaten the entire. We appear to be vanishing from this plane of reality. When? That didn't last long. I wonder where we... Okay, Axis. Here we come. My flame-covered friend speaks true. You spies have just chosen the wrong destroyer to sabotage. You're facing the invaders now. Guys, there's an old cliche about not being in Kansas. That's too corny for even me to use, but it seems like we've landed smack in the middle of World War II. But how are we ever supposed to return home? The mighty Thor has a bone to pick with just ev about everybody in the cosmos. The Silver Surfer and the Warlock want to stop his madness before it gets out of hand. Starting in Thor 468 and continuing through Silver Surfer, Warlock Chronicles and Warlock the Infinity Watch follow Thor Galaxy Spanning Tour of Destruction. Witness blood and thunder. All righty. Well, that was Thor Core number one. Hope you enjoyed that book. That was from 1993. Three. Now, don't forget, this book and others are available on my eBay page, papas-comic-books. Please hit that like button down below. Please hit that subscribe button down below and leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought about it, okay? All righty. And as Papa and Thor and Dargo always say... That was easy. Until next time, Papa is out!